When it comes to misconceptions in math in the Black community, what do you think some misconceptions are? And why do you think we have them? And what do you think the solution is? Well, I'll just, let's do what they are and why do we have them first? So, well, one of, one of the things is, uh, well, okay, I'll name a couple of them. Um, so Lisa Delpit, education researcher, she she's a, you know, scholar, education scholar and whatnot. She's written like multiple books. One of her books is entitled Multiplication is for White People. Mm. And she got that, she she entitled that particular book in that way because that was a quote from a young brother. I think she was doing like research at a school. Uh, I think, I don't know if the school was, I think, I want to say the school was in Louisiana, but it was okay. in, in some state. Um, not to say that, you know, you know, young black children don't feel that way all over the country because of like, you know, the type of conditioning that we get exposed to. But um, he was saying, she was talking to him and he was saying like, you know, yeah, we know how to do addition and subtraction, but the harder stuff, you know, the multiplication and division, like that stuff, that's for white people. So that was, that's the mentality, right? That, you know, we're not equipped to do more. To, well, first multiplication is seen as more advanced, right? And I guess relatively speaking, if you like five or six years old, yeah, multiplication would seem more advanced if you don't know it. But relatively speaking, the more advanced math is relegated to or supposed to be the exclusive domain of white folks or people that are non-blacks, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that those, those types of ideas just get recycled and regurgitated. And, you know, and a lot of times we joke about it, but, you know, like how they say, like, in every pound of jokes, it's an ounce of truth. Mm -hmm. So people really feel that way, right? Um, and it's like this... Uh, it's almost like a lot of people in the community, we trauma bond. So it's like, oh, I wasn't good at math. Oh, I wasn't good at math neither. Oh, so yeah, oh, that's what's up. Yeah, we all just wasn't good at math. And we <laughs> yeah. kind of like, we we take pride in it almost. Whereas like, right. we wouldn't do that if we couldn't read. If we couldn't read, we'd be embarrassed. Like we would never say it. And a lot of people I think do have literacy challenges, but they don't broadcast it though. Like with right. math, it's like people broadcast it, right? They do broadcast it. Yeah, because it's like, it's, it's what I call an accepted deficiency. Mm, it's an accepted true. deficiency, right? Mm -hmm. um, because, and I think, so another, which takes me to my next um, misconception is that math is irrelevant. So if we accept the fact that it's irrelevant, if we believe that it's irrelevant, then it's like, it doesn't matter if I'm not good at it, right? Because I could just say, well, it's not relevant anyway. Like, mm -hmm. it's almost like, like I, I can't drive a stick shift, right? But that's okay for me because my cars are automatic. And I don't even know if they still make stick shifts as much, as often as they used to back in the 80s and the 70s and whatnot, right? But so people kind of treat math that way. 